All right, this is the 1.3 through 1.4 notes. So we're going to look at linear uh, functions and um, exponents. So here's a little scenario to help us understand linear functions better. Um, we're looking at taking a taxi and um, when you take a taxi there's always this flat rate. And in this case it's three dollars and thirty cents. It's called the drop charge. Um, and that's made when the taxi meter is activated. And then there's an additional fee. Um, there's a two dollar and forty cent fee for every mile that the taxi drives. So um, the fare the total fare that you're going to pay is going to depend on how many miles are written in the taxi. Um, and this is a linear function and we're going to pick descriptive variables, so M for miles and C for the cost of the taxi ride in dollars. And cost is a function of miles. So in this case, cost is the dependent variable and miles is the independent variable. Um, because the cost is going to depend on how many miles are, are um, driven. So we get the equation C of M equals 3.3 plus 2.4 M. The first is a fixed cost, $3.30 charge, which does not change based on the value of the input. And we call this the C intercept. The second is the $2.40 the $2 mile per value, or mi per mile value, um, which is the rate of change, i.e. slope. Um, and in this equation, the rate of change is multiplied by the input value. In other words, how many miles were driven. So if we look at, for example, the first three miles, so the cost if you don't go any miles is three dollars and thirty cents. One mile is going you're gonna add a two the two forty to that. For two miles, it goes up to eight dollars and ten cents and three ten fifty. And if we look at a graph for this, so zero is, uh, 330. Well, that's a little high, I guess. Let me see if I can move that. Um, one is 570. So one goes about right there. Two is 810. And three is 1050. So that's just barely um, over the, <coughs> the 10 line there. And we can draw a little line through these points. And we see that it is linear, <coughs> and that as you keep going more miles, the cost just goes up and up. So um, linear functions can either be written in this form, where this, the y-intercept is written first, and then the slope times how times the independent variable, or it can be slope first times the independent variable plus the y-intercept. They're the same. Where b is always your initial or starting value and m is a constant rate. So this form is called slope intercept form of a line. m is the constant rate of change of the function also called slope. The slope determines if the function is increasing as an increasing function or decreasing function. So the function is going to be increasing if m is positive, it's decreasing if m is negative. If m is zero then the rate of change is zero and the function is equal to just f of x equals b, which is just a horizontal line passing through 0b for the y-intercept. And it's neither increasing nor decreasing. So example, a town's population has been growing linearly. In 2003, the population was 25,000. The population has been growing 2,000 by 2,000 people each year. Write an equation for the population. p, x years after 2003. So p of x, the starting population was 25,000, so that's our y-intercept, and it goes up 2,000 each year, so plus 2,000 x. Alright, a clothing business finds there is a linear relationship between the number of shirts n. It can sell in the price p, it can charge per shirt. In particular, historical data shows that 8,000 shirts can be sold for a price of $74. So that's a a point, a data point, um, 8,074, while 9,000 shirts can
10 be sold at a price of $65. So we want to give um, a linear equation in the form P equals MN plus B that gives the price they can charge for N shirts. So first we have to find the slope with the slope formula. And you'll see that we have the slope formula below here. So I take these two points and I plug in um, the values. So y, um, subtract the y's basically, and then subtract the x's. And it doesn't matter which order you do them in as long as you're consistent. You'll notice that the first two, um, these two here, come from the same point and so do these. So they need to line up like that. So 74 minus 65 is going to be 9. And then um, 8,000 minus 9,000 is negative 1,000. So we get negative 9 over 1,000. Well, that just gives us the slope. And um, they want us to give us to give an equation. So we still need to find what B is. So, so far we have that P is negative 9 over 1,000 and plus B. Well, if we pick either one of those points, it doesn't matter which one, I'll take the first one, and plug in a value for P and N. So 74 and 8,000. Then the only variable I have left to get is B. So let's see, 8,000 divided by 1,000 is 8, so you get a negative 72 here. So 74 equals negative 72 plus B. So if I add 72 to both sides, then I get 146 is equal to B. So we finally have the equation that they wanted. P is equal to negative 9 over 1,000 N plus 146. It's a little messy, but hopefully you can re read that well enough. All right, so the rate of change that we've been talking about is change of output over change of input, or delta y over delta x. That's just another way of saying change in y over change in x. And just subtracting the y values over subtracting the x values. You can also look at it in slope form, um, where instead of y's, we say f of x. 2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Another example of finding slope, we want the slope that passes through these two points. So it's going to be 5 minus a negative 2 over 1 minus a negative 4. So we get 7 over 5. Remember that when you subtract a negative, you actually add. Population of a city increased from 42,500 to 51,009 between these two years, 2000 and 2012. Find the rate of change. All right, so we want the rate of change of population during this time span. So the time span is going to be our um, our independent variable. Oops, get rid of that. Get rid of that. <laughs> and the population is the um, dependent one. So 51,009 minus 42,500 all over 2012 minus 2000. So with that subtraction, you should get 8,509 over 12. And uh, let me just double check that that's actually simplified. So if I take my calculator and I put 8509 divided by 12, math, enter, enter, and it's the same. So it is simplified. We can look at slope graphically, um, but to do that, you want to find points that are like right on the grid, like this one here. And uh, another one is right here. And there's probably several more. If you make a little triangle, that's not what I wanted to do. 
Make a little triangle between those two points, which uh, my triangle is a little bad looking. And then you count up um, the rise over the run. So the rise is three, and the run looks like it's four. And the line is going up from, from left to right. So it's a positive three force. Uh, so that's another way we can look at slope. And the equation of this line, the y-intercept is zero, so the equation of this line is just y equals three-fourths x. And you can put plus zero if you want, but it doesn't change it. If f of x is a linear function, and we're given the two points, f of three equals negative five, and f of seven equals one, find an equation for the function. All right, so uh, a lot of students don't realize that, you know, those are your two points. If we, if we rewrite them in uh, ordered pair form, we get neg 3, negative 5, and 7, 1. So m is going to be 1 minus a negative 5 over 7 minus 3, which is 6 over 4, which is 3 halves. That's just the first part. If we plug in one of the points, let's see, the first one, into the equation and um, solve for b. So we get 9 halves, negative 5 equals 9 halves plus b. And we subtract the 9 halves on both sides. Then we're going to get uh, minus 19 halves equals b. Okay, so slope 3 halves, b that. If we put it all together, um, f of x is equal to 3 halves x minus 19 over 2. That's it. That's the equation that we're asked to find. An alternative way is to use um, this equation, the point slope form. Um, it's not a whole lot different. And you'd plug in your y1 and your x1 using one of the points. It doesn't matter which one. And plug in your m. And uh, you can get your equation that way. All right, 1.4 is just a summary of your exponent rules. Um, there's a couple that we're going to be using a lot in this course. So um, here are all of the exponent rules. Um, rules for negative exponents. Remember, if it's negative, then... Um, you can move it to, if it's on the top and it's negative, you can move it to the bottom and make it positive and vice versa, um, which we'll be doing a lot. Like the example right here where we have x squared and it's in the denominator, but I want to bring it up to the numerator. And I can, I just have to make that exponent negative. Um, this one's negative, so we bring it up to the top and now it's positive. Whenever you're flipping it from one floor to the other, it changes sign. The exponent changes sign. Uh, but just to recall, on uh, 3a, we're going to add those exponents, so we get x to the 13th. Here we subtract them and get y to the negative 3, which is also 1 over y cubed. Remember, you can move it to a different floor and change the sign. Um, if we combine the two on the top, we get a squared over a cubed. So that's a total of a to the negative 1, or 1 over a. Distributing that 6, we get y to the 18th, z to the 6th, over y to the negative 2, z cubed. And if we subtract both of them, I get y to the 20th and z cubed. Again, remember when you're subtracting a negative, you add, not subtract. That's a common mistake. Uh, changing radical to um, rational, we're going to be doing this a lot too. So you make it a fraction, and the top number is the one inside, and the bottom number is the one outside. So we get x to the 2 thirds, x to the 5 fourths, and x to the 1 third. There's a hidden one in there. That's it, folks.